Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know, I'm always so thrilled to have you. So today I just have kind of like a quirky little bio for you. It's not going to be like, where did I go to school? When did I move to Hawaii? And all the like regular stuff. Um, I've been tagged a few times to do the five things about me, like random things. So I'm just going to share them with you today. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn a little weird thing about me. And if anybody ever gives you a Kaylee Bird trivia, then you will have all the answers. Oh my gosh, I just put my hand in my paint. Well, okay. <laughs> enjoy the show. Bye guys. Oh, and if you do hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> Number five for five things about your favorite little bird. Um, I am actually from Canada. Can you believe it? Yes, I know, I know. You're probably like, wait, I thought you were from Charleston. Yes, I am from Charleston. That's pretty much what I claim. So the tiniest of backstories. My parents met in Charleston, South Carolina, even though neither one of them was from there. They met actually at an art show. Ah, yes. And um, fell in love, got preggers with me, and decided to scoot on up to Canada to have me for free because my dad was a citizen. So yeah, they went up there. I'm an only child. We were up there for until I was almost three, but my mom was like, it is too flipping cold up here and I don't blame her because I have a whole bunch of family up in Canada and I only go back and visit in the summer. So anyways, when I was almost three, my parents came back down and moved to Charleston, South Carolina, where I lived basically my entire life until I moved to Hawaii. Actually, I did a lot of traveling, but that was like pretty much always my home base. So yeah, now you know, your favorite bird is actually a little Canuck. And I was super lucky because I have total dual, dual citizenship. I didn't have to pick one or the other. So yay for exciting little Canadian birds. So number four in my five random crazy things about Kaylee <laughs> is uh, my fancy silver bracelets. They are permanent. Yes, how exciting is that, right? So, um, yeah, they're actually gifts from basically my mom and my grandma, and it's like very special to me because, you know, I feel like I kind of channel their energy in me. So, the tiny silver ones um, were my mom's when she was like in high school, I think, and she wore them for a few years and then took them off and traded them. I think in whatever traded them, gave it to my grandmother and got this one gold bracelet that she put on and basically she grew into it and her gold bracelet has been on her for 40 years something like that and my grandmother has six that are the same way but they're different they're like kind of lightly designed but she's had those on i think again 40 maybe 50 years she put them on many years ago well she's passed away now but she lived into her 90s and i think she put them on sometime in her 40s or 50s so yeah they were permanent and then when i was in and it wasn't like on purpose it wasn't like a you know some weird thing that we have to do or something but we just both did and then when I was like 10 years old my grandmother passed these silver ones down that were my mom's in high school and uh, I put them on and I've only taken them off one time in over 20 years and um, yeah when I did it was quite painful it really it did not come off well it scratched me all up I was all red like especially taking all eight of them off it was awful it was not good it's not a great circumstance either um, the bigger ones my grandmother gave me a few years later these ones I can get off a little bit easier they're just slightly bigger but um but I, I never do like I never ever take them off ever never like no one that I know has ever seen me without these bracelets on you know even like airport security I always get buzzed like going to the doctor if I've had to get like x-rays I'm always like you gotta deal with it you know whatever so um anyways yeah so that's just some weird little quirky thing about me and my family like I said my grandmother who was like super close with has passed away but I'm still you know me and my mom still rocking our, uh, our permanent bracelets and I probably will never take these off ever like I have lived over twice as much time on this earth with these bracelets on as I have before I put them on so it's kind of weird to think about that you know and like as far as the sound I love it so much you can probably hear it in like all my videos but you know it's just like I don't even notice it but when I do I'm like oh it's just this lovely sort of tinkling and I don't even honestly hear it most of the time because it's just there all the time but then what I do I'm like, so lovely so anyways that's number four of Kaylee's crazy factoids <laughs> now you will get an A in trivia <laughs> And number three on Kaylee's crazy list about herself is that I am a total maker. So obviously I'm an art maker, duh, you know that, but not only do I 
paint the paintings, but I create all of my own surfaces. I used an oil prime Belgian linen and I affix it to wood myself instead of wrapping it. It's a method that I like to do. I am my own frame maker. Obviously this is a work in progress and this is gonna have way more going on like this. But yeah, I just wanted to show you, like I, I do, I make all of my own painting surfaces. Um, I even make my own sketchbooks. So the ones that I do my figure drawings on, I make these all myself. I make the binding and everything like that. You know, I, I like to get what I want, so that's why I make it. Not only am I making things for art making, but I also make a lot of my own clothes, um, either from scratch, such as what I'm wearing now. Hopefully you can see my little skirt with the little ties on the side. Um, but yeah, I make, you know, I make patchwork and fun stuff like that from scratch. I used to be uh, like a, a crafter vendor. I travel and vend at music festivals and like craft fairs and all kinds of stuff like that for a few years. So I would make all kinds of things like this to sell there. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, so I've been making my own clothes since I was about 12. I really lucked out. My mom started teaching me how to sew when I was about five. We were doing like doll clothes and, you know, she let me press the foot pedal on the machine and everything. So, um, yeah, I started making my own stuff when I was about 12, and well, um, I like to make stuff from scratch. One of my favorite things to do is to alter stuff. I go to, the, you know, basically get everything at a thrift store. So I like to get stuff that's too small a lot of times, and then make it bigger by putting in fun patches. Um, and uh, I definitely tend to love my clothes forever and ever and ever. So I have more than a few pairs of pants and things that look like this that are the best, most comfortable ever. Um, yeah, obviously. Um, I, uh, I have a pretty uh, homemade hairstyle. This is pretty low maintenance. I trim my bangs myself and everything. Um, I've made mountains of jewelry in the past, although I don't really do as much jewelry making anymore. But what I don't make, I love to uh, trade for. So that's really exciting. Um, but not only that, I've started getting into making my own lotions. I make my own lip balm. It's all this stuff is super easy. After a candle's done, I refill it myself now. I make my own candles, like just all kinds of stuff. I mean, what else? I Oh, I've done like simple woodworking, you know, obviously the frames and stuff, but I've built my elevated bed. I've built like, not here, but on the mainland, like small shelf units. I helped my friend build a bed frame. Like I've done lots of like woodworking tools like that. Oh my gosh, like in the kitchen, I mean, I make my own hummus from scratch, like dry beans, and I make my own, um, uh, wheat free um, wraps like little tortilla wraps I make you know like a batch every week I've done a lot of bread making I mean I make I try to make like everything from scratch in the kitchen you know what I mean everything from like hard dry beans and fresh vegetables and make my own vegan cheeses make my own like I said hummus tabbouleh falafel wraps and satsiki I make my own yogurt from um, uh, coconut milk yogurt like I just you know I try to I like to make everything I can from scratch like that's how I was raised my mom is a maker too and um, she you know that was always the inclination is like okay I need this thing I, can I make it myself is the first thought always I mean I fixed my like things on my own car I mean you can just YouTube just about anything I mean I you know fix your own lights I, I thought I was gonna have to replace the little motor on my you know window like all that so, you know I just Everything that I can make or do with these two things is optimal, best, yes, that's what I try to do always. And um, I just realized I almost forgot to show you one of the most exciting things I have ever made, and that is my sock monsters. Yes, like I was saying, when I used to travel and be a crafter vendor and stuff like that, this was one of the main things that I make. So I make these little sock monsters. Each one is one of a kind. They're, um, they have their own names. This is Ralphie. This one is Reba. Uh, I can't remember his name. Poncho, maybe I can't remember. Um, but anyways, yeah. And I, you know, I, I travel and sell these. I don't really do them as much anymore. But I, people request my monsters because I made them for years. Like I've made like well over a thousand of these guys. Um, but so I'm gonna start making like small batches or whatever. Stay tuned if you're interested in something like that. But anyways, yeah. So I just I I am a maker. I mean, whatever I can do, whatever I can do with my bare hands, like I just there's nothing more satisfying than like coming into a room or a project and going like this a bunch that it's like a whole new thing, right? Um, uh, on a side note, <laughs> I have had people ask me, they're like, how are you doing, so how are you making all this art and doing all this and still cooking yourself all these meals and blah, blah, blah. And uh, the short answer is, I have not owned a TV in over a decade, so 
I mean, for, you know, I just, I don't sit still. You guys have seen my studio. I don't have, like, chairs and stuff. So, you know, I'm just a kind of a high energy person and it just, I feel like energy begets energy. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a doer, maker, shaker. You know, this little bird is just bopping around her nest, just getting her little nose and everything she can. So, yay, one more thing. <laughs> Alright, so number two of five weird things about Kaylee is I am an avid hula hooper. Oh, yes. I love it more than anything. It is my release. It is how I, it's almost like it makes me able to zen out. You know what I mean? Like, there are very few things that I can do to quiet the mind, and hula hooping is one of them. I've been doing it for about 10 years or so, just like dance hooping, and then about five years ago is when I started incorporating all kinds of fancy schmancy little tricks and things, yes, and uh, woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little song for you today. Um, now I'm using uh, Diala, the music that I use for a lot of my videos, um, who does uh, copyright free music because I do not want to get in trouble with this channel. However, I do have another YouTube channel where I hula hoop to more of my favorite music. I like a lot of soul music and oldies and like Van Morrison and like all kinds of good stuff, you know. Um, so uh, anyways, if you would like to see more hula hooping, then by all means, check out my other channel. It's just called Kaylee Bird. I will leave links, of course. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy my hooping because I sure do enjoy doing it. <laughs> sharing about me and this one feels almost silly to share in a video because it is like totally obvious in real life but I was born with a cleft lip yep there she is I wear her every day <laughs> uh, yeah you know if you're not sure what a cleft lip is it's basically when you're born with like your lip split you can have a cleft palate and that kind of thing I didn't luckily um, but uh, yeah I was again lucky enough to be born in Canada where not only then my parents had me for free, but I was able to get one of the best plastic surgeons in the entire country to uh, fix my lip when I was only three months old. So it's been like not a bad scar at all. And um, yeah, you know, like kids could be cruel or whatever, but nobody ever made me feel bad. Like no, none of the kids were ever mean to me in like elementary school or whatever. Nobody's ever made me feel bad or any less than lovely about it or whatever. You know, I've never had a problem like getting a date or any of that kind of stuff. So. You know, it's whatever. We all have our things. Like, this one is mine, you know? I mean, oh my goddess, if this was the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life, like, I would be beyond thrilled, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, that being said, of course, like, I'm confident in my own, right? I don't wear makeup. I don't try to cover it up. It's, you know, I'm kind of whatever about it, but it's not like I've ever seen a supermodel or anybody, like, in any kind of high fashion magazine with a cleft or anything like that, you know? Like, so I feel you know, underrepresented in that aspect, but whatever, I think that's kind of why it's translated for me and my art to want to have such an inclusive, like, collection of models because, you know, like I said, growing up never really feeling represented by, you know, any magazines that I would see in the grocery store or any of that kind of stuff, like, it didn't really bother me, but, you know, like, that kind of stuff does kind of affect you. I'm sure, I'm sure other folks that don't feel represented felt the same way, even though they don't really care, it still is kind of like, oh, okay, world for telling me that I don't fit in in a standard of beauty. Okay, gotcha. So, anyways, we all do, folks. We all do. All you gotta do is just let the light shine on you, put your best self forward, and you are a beautiful, glowing pile of beauty. So, anyways, yes, that's my thing. That's my number one, my cleft lip, whatever. If that means that I can make other people feel good and more beautiful and more special in their own skin through my artwork by having, um, you know, a feeling of acceptance, then 
so be it. Then, then my cleft lip is a blessing, you know? Whatever, it's all good. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Mwah.